Today we're taking a look at Engine DJ 2.0. This is the brand new version of Engine, which used to be called Engine Prime and Engine OS. The software that powers the hardware that currently comes from Denon DJ. So looking at the Prime 4 controller here, or the Prime 4 system here, there's also the Prime 2, the Prime Go, the SC5000 and 6000 media players and so on. So the embedded OS and the laptop software that we use on our laptops to prepare our music comprises the engine ecosystem. It's a little bit like the record box ecosystem for Pioneer DJ's equipment that is necessary to properly prepare your music to export onto a USB drive to then plug into a unit in order to DJ from. But then once you've plugged it in, it lets you do all the clever stuff within that unit. The two halves of it are the one that's running on the hardware and the one that's running, running on your laptop. So this is Engine DJ 2.0. So it's got a new name to start with. It's called Engine DJ now instead of Engine Prime. And so along with that, it's got a 2.0 number and this generally means a really big up, update to it. And it is a really big update to the uh, both the hardware and the software. Is a, there's a lot of stuff here which is brand new. Uh, but just to let you know where we're at with this, you know, what this is, what it all means. You no, know, this hardware here, this is the Prime 4, four channel DJ system, but there's also, there's also the Prime 2 and the Prime Go. I use the Prime Go a lot. And as I said, the, the SC6000 and 5000 and media players and so on. Uh, this is very powerful hardware. This is at the time of recording this in uh, the beginning of October, 2021, the most powerful standalone, i.e. you don't need your laptop with you when you're DJing, gear that you can get out there. It's got four channels, it's got built-in Wi-Fi, it's got the ability to stream music directly from your Dropbox, uh, and as you're about to find out, there's an awful lot more that it can do now as of version 2.0. So it's a powerful standalone DJ system. Uh, we're gonna look for the rest of today's video uh, about uh, what's new in Engine 2.0, both on the desktop and the operating system that runs on your, on your equipment. So by the end of it, you'll be clear as to whether these new things mean that maybe they're gonna tip you over the edge to have a go with this. Or of course, if you are someone who already owns this gear, well, you're gonna be excited to get it downloaded and get uh, the firmware updated inside your equipment and the software on your laptop. The firmware can happen over the air now, can happen over Wi-Fi. Uh, and so you don't even need to download any files and plug them in and so on. You can just go to the go to the settings, find it and upgrade from there, which is really cool. As ever, if you enjoy this, we would appreciate your support. You can follow the channel both here on YouTube if you're watching there, but also on Facebook as well. And then we can tell you when we go live with these things. But most importantly, join Digital DJ Tips. That is, if you're gonna do one thing today, do that because that'll get you a free copy of our book, Rock the Dance Floor, the number one best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ, but more importantly, it will get you our Tuesday Tips weekly email, which is the best email to have in your inbox if you're trying to become a better DJ or better DJ producer. djtips.co slash join, it's free. Right, let's get started looking at the new look Engine 2.0 software, both Engine 2.0 desktop and Engine 2.0 OS for currently Denon DJ's gear at the time of recording this. So we'll start with the desktop. Let's see what's new on the desktop app. So to start with, it's a lot cleaner. It's the same kind of look as the original. There's no big changes, but it's a lot cleaner. One thing that I really like is that playlists now replace playlists and crates. So you don't have those two very confusing playlists and crates down in your file tree. You just got playlists and that's really, really nice. It was just, no one could get the difference between the two uh, and it's good that they've ditched one of them. And, and also as part of that upgrading of the way all that works, you don't get the duplicate files anymore. So when you used to plug in your USB drive and also have your collection on the same computer, you'd see two of everything and it wasn't clear whether you were looking at the one on the USB drive or the one on the computer. That's all gone now. That's all That's all. a, a lot neater on there. Loads and loads of little improvements on there, which are a bit geeky to kind of go into in detail, but I'll tell you what they are. They're things like uh, easy importing from your Rekordbox collection and your Serato collection and so on, including in Rekordbox, you can finally get the memory cues to come in. You've got options about what you're gonna do with that. Uh, it's also got uh, the ability to like look at your file trees the way they are in your system, uh, which is uh, something that's clear and nice on there that wasn't on the previous version. It is worth warning you though, uh, as we found out, that when you get this new version of the engine software running, Engine DJ 2.0, you are gonna to have to upgrade your database. 
you can't use the old database and once you've done that the old engine prime desktop software won't work anymore and this actually far from being a pain is brilliant because the new database is an awful lot faster and you notice it when you're just going through your preparation tasks and so on but more importantly upgrading that built-in database and upgrade, upgrading all the stuff you can't see on the software, Denon's engineers tell me uh, in the kind of vague tones that engineers tell you stuff in that isn't public knowledge yet, that this just basically lays the foundations for some very, very exciting stuff down the line that just wasn't possible with the last version of the database. So that is a good thing. There's a good thing that they've done that. Uh, other bits and pieces on here, you can now export sound switch information. Sound switch? Sound switch is a little system that allows you to control DMX lighting, professional DJ lighting from your DJ equipment. And this is what it looks like. It's just an interface that goes between your uh, USB output on your DJ gear and or your laptop and your lighting and it runs on your laptop. So what's that got to do with this? Why are we exporting sound switch from here? Well, that brings us on to the operating system the new engine DJ OS that's running inside this, and um, one of the big new features of it, which is this operating system can now control DJ lights. So that's just one of the new things on the operating system. Uh, the other big one is Ableton Link, and I'll talk to you about both of those now as we move away from the laptop and towards having a look at the OS here that we've got running. This is engine DJ 2.0 OS running on this Prime 4 unit here. So first I'll show you how you turn on Ableton. Uh, it's in the new look settings panel, which is very nice. It's all been cleaned up and uh, far less scrolling and messing around in here, which is cool. And you go into this uh, settings services section here and click Ableton link on. And that gives you a link ticket at the top here with the BPM and the Ableton link sign. And this is going to then link you up to anything else with Ableton link running uh, that you've got on your system, which is really cool. It just works, as I said before, works with Wi-Fi and with Ethernet, which is uh, great on hardware. Good to see that one. But the one that I think is the most impressive uh, is the new lighting implementation. So lighting on this is qu quite cleverly done via the other product that I showed you earlier on my desk, Sound Switch, which is owned by the same people that make the hardware, Denon DJ hardware, and also more importantly, the engine software that's powering all of this. And the way lighting works is to give you two, two kind of goes at this. The first one is the professional go. Using that cable, you plug it into the back of here, you plug it into DMX lighting. DMX is like MIDI. It's like the professional way of making lights talk to each other and to controllers and so on. You plug all that together and then there's an, an awesome amount of power in here. If you've ever played with the sound switch desktop app, which is how you would normally control stuff like this before this kind of implementation, it's just incredible what you can do with it. You can have stuff saved for all kinds of light setups, all kinds of venues and so on. And so as a professional, that's awesome. But for everyone else, this has got something that I am going to demo to you today. I'm not going to set up DMX lights and demo all that kind of stuff to you today, but I am going to show you the, uh, the way this works with kind of the lights that you might have spotted I've got set up here, which is this kind of light. They are the Philips Hue lights and these have their own little controller box that plugs into your router and from that you can use an app on your phone, usually it's on your phone, uh, to control them and set the mood. You must have seen these. This kind of light here is the one you often see stuck behind TV sets to give a kind of nice look on the wall. This one here actually can work on battery as well. You can unplug the thing uh, and move it around uh, but the point is they're all connected up together. So this now is capable of being controlled from the Denon DJ engine DJ OS equipped hardware. So let me show you how this works. And it's as simple. Once you've got it turned on uh, in the system, so again, let's go back to the system and I'll show you how that works. Uh, we're going to head over to our settings and we're going to turn on engine lighting down here. Uh, and once we've done that, then we just hit play on our music and the lights will start flashing away there, as you can see. Uh, so these are both now flashing in time with the music even better than that. Um, so this is like sound to light, right? We've seen this on lights in the past, but actually it's better than sound to light because you have basically a pre-programmed show going on here that the system has chosen for this particular record, the frequencies and so on. So there, if I stop and scratch that beat, you can see I'm holding not only the light, but the color. 
So that color there, because that's where I stopped, that's the one I'm kind of scratching. Uh, and it's following what you're doing with the decks, with the lights, which is pretty cool. But it's even cooler when you look at the way the controls are set up to give you more control than that. I mean, look at the options we've got on here, which I'm just gonna touch on. So option number one, for instance, I can have a color override. So I want the lights to all be yellow. I can hit the color override, and now my lights are stuck on a yellow color. Or let's say that I want to um, make the lights go completely white. I want to white out the whole place. Well, I can use the white button here uh, to white out the lights, and then they look like this. There we go. I've got them whited out for the drop. Uh, and then when uh, the music kicks in, I can take that off again and we're off back to our normal light show. Uh, you've got also uh, just the ability to stop the lights there, uh, to momentarily black everything out. Uh, I'm just pressing buttons there on the overhead here that I can show you. Got play pause, blackout, show movement, all kinds of stuff here, uh, which is pretty cool. A lot of fun when you start playing with it. And this is just with a couple of domestic Philips Hue lights that I've set up on the table to demo this for you. If you've got a full house kitted out in this stuff, you could come up with some really awesome stuff on here. And it's got stuff like mirrorball simulation and all kinds of stuff that I haven't had time to get into, but trust me, it's a lot of fun. And I'm really not a lighting guy. I never even watched music videos when I was a kid. I just wanted to hear the music. To me, I'm kind of blind to this kind of thing. Even I've had fun messing with this. So I'm sure if you've got this kind of lights, um, it's gonna be fun for you as well. It's totally free. It works free uh, without the box here. If you want to use it with DMX lights, it's a subscription and all that kind of thing. But just to use it with consumer lights with the Philips Hue system, uh, it's completely free. Uh, so lighting, yeah, really like that. I think that's cool. Now, I want to show you a few changes uh, to the way the operating system works on the screens because there's just a few things that have stuck out for me that I think if you're currently a user of this, you're going to want to know about. So again, in the settings here, it just all looks a little bit nicer. It looks a little bit different uh, to how it looked before. Uh, so uh, in the control center now, this is just the main page. We've got quantize, it's just, it's still there. It used to be tucked up at the top. Uh, we've got continue because you can now have a playlist playing on a channel um, and it'll auto mix it forever for you. This is just a stop time for how quickly the, the deck stops when you hit the stop button. It's quite nice to have that front and center there. Uh, and then moving over into the user profile section. So everything's on tabs now across the top here. Uh, there's no scrolling to do, uh, which is nice because that used to be used to be used to scroll down and down and down to look at all these things. So I want to draw your attention to the loops. You can set the loops up in here so that when you press the loop button on a save loop, it jumps to that loop rather than waiting until it actually reaches that loop as the song plays. Pretty sure that wasn't in the last version. Something else I've noticed is that you can now um, move forward as well as back when you are holding the shift button and you're moving a loop. Uh, it used to only move the loop back. When you move forward, it just jumped out of the loop and waited till it reached it again. Uh, also on the, uh, on the settings here, some other things I wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, so in the main settings section here, they've got a time and date setting. Uh, and this is important because now that the unit knows the time and date, that means that when you are DJing, the history can come across from here back to engine DJ on the desktop properly. And it'll say, you know, last Thursday at 11 p.m. you played this. That wasn't there before. You couldn't do that before because the clock, there wasn't a clock uh, that you were allowed to access on these units. And that's been fixed in here, uh, which is going to be useful for people who like to look back at the music they played in the past at various times. You know, what did I play on New Year's Eve last year? Well, now you can see that there. The layout's a lot nicer here. The way they've laid everything out here is just, it's just easier because before you just scrolled and scrolled and scrolled through like almost endless menu options and couldn't remember what was where. Uh, and they've changed the wording as well. They've called it user profile and settings. And that makes more sense because the user profile goes with you from unit to unit. The settings is particular to this unit. Again, it's just there's more clarity there. It's easier to use. Now, something else I noticed over on the streaming services on the unit, uh, and that is that you can now uh, do some things on the streaming service that you could on the streaming services that you couldn't do on the previous versions. So I've got Tidal loaded up here, and now we can swipe tracks and add them to a prepare window in Tidal. Uh, you can see the word prepare 
appeared there, probably hard to read on the overhead camera. Uh, but that's cool, you can now add prepare. You've also got the ability to listen to tunes uh, on preview on your headphones on there, which you couldn't do before. These will also show up in your history section. Uh, and um, you can also auto mix from playlists in here as well. Again, this is all new stuff that wasn't on the, uh, on the engine 1.6, the final version uh, before 2.0 came along. So that's the big things. All the stuff that's changed on here has been written up over in the accompanying uh, review article. So do go and take a look at that article. There's a link underneath. Uh, it's exciting. You know, the, this kind of hardware is only ever as good as the software that runs on it, whether it's embedded or whether it's on the laptop for preparation. It's exciting to see such a big leap forward. It wasn't so long ago, 1.6 came up with lots of changes as well. But for me, what's really exciting, uh, and it's not something I haven't been able to show you, is just the fact that they've rewritten the database entirely. Because by rewriting the database, it means they've opened up the doors to all kinds of mega, mega exciting stuff, which is gonna be coming down the line for this. So good time to upgrade it, good time to jump into this system if you've been thinking about it, but keep an eye on it once you do, because uh, I just predict there's gonna be some pretty cool stuff coming your way, thanks to the under the hood stuff that I can't show you on a, uh, a review video like this. Let me know what you think about the Engine DJ 2.0 updates. Maybe you wanna talk about lighting, Ableton Link, the name change and what that might mean, uh, because it's now been divorced from the Denon DJ brand. Uh, so uh, who will it partner up with next? You let me know your thoughts underneath about that stuff. If you've got any questions about this uh, that I haven't answered, please do ask underneath. We've been playing it for, with it for a while, so I do have uh, quite, quite a lot of answers about how this works. Uh, and um, do go and have a look at that written version if you want more info. Subscribe if you enjoyed this. Do join Digital DJ Tips as well if you want to learn how to become a better DJ or better DJ producer. It's totally free and there is your link. This has been Phil Morse in the Digital DJ Tips studio with Engine 2.0. Now get good, get out there and make the moments. And I'll see you again very soon.